Alright, so lesson four, we're talking about postulates and theorems. We we're already talking about postulates, but we're talking about this new concept called theorems. Theorems sound like theories, and basically theorems are theorems until we prove them. Um, postulates and theorems about points, lines, and planes. It's theorem. Theorem, yeah. Okay, so postulate five. Here's an important one, postulate five. So when I say P-O-S-T, that means postulate. Postulate five, this is how you spell through in math because it's too confusing and annoying to spell it out. Through any two points, any two points in the universe, there is exactly one line. You can't draw two lines between uh, two points. Exactly one line, okay? Two points anywhere, you can only draw one line through it. You can't draw any other line than that one through those two points. That's postulate five. And if I labeled it AB, I would say line AB is unique. Unique is a geometric word that means one and only one. Unique one. Okay, so through any two points, there exists only one line. All right, here's a theorem. We call it theorem 4-1 because it's in the fourth chapter and it's the first theorem. You don't have to necessarily remember these theorem numbers, but if you put the right theorem number down, then you don't have to write it all out. But if you don't remember the theorem number, that's okay. Just write the point of the theorem. So here's the, what the theorem says. If two lines intersect, then they intersect at only one, exactly one point. Okay, we already talked about this. Two lines intersect, they're never gonna come around and intersect again. It's just one point. Okay, look at example one up here. And for those of you at home, look in your book or in your text, online, the PDF there. At example one, here's what example one says. Come on. Okay, use postulates and theorems. Does this diagram show two distinct lines through A and B? Okay, so see how they tried to draw two lines through A and B, but one of them is not a line. So, you can prove it if you want. There's actually proof to that, um, but we're not gonna go over that right now. So, yeah, there's only one line. Why do you know that? Now you know it because of theorem 4.1 that says if two lines inter intersect, the, oh no, it postulate five, which is something we agree to be true without proof, there only exists one line in between the two, okay? Moving on, postulate six. So if two points determine a line, only one line, then how many points do you think will determine a plane? Three, Three. just go up one dimension. Okay, so postulate six says, through any three non-collinear, you have to say non-collinear because if they're on the same line, then that's not going to prove much. Through any three non-collinear points, a line and a point not or or 
a line and a point not on a line, which is three non-collinear points. Or just two intersecting lines. So there's three things. So three non-collinear points, a point and a, and a line, or a point not on the line, or two intersecting lines. There exists only one plane, or one, yeah, one plane. Exactly, so exactly is one and only one, a unique plane. Okay, so real quick, we're gonna run through the, the rest of these theorems and postulates up here. So if you wanna look up here, and those of you at home, you can look at your text, write these down. It helps to have them in a separate place. Theorem 4.2 says, where are you? Oops, going the wrong way. Theorem 4.2, if there's a line and a point not on the line, then exactly one plane contains them, okay? So see how there's a line here, EF, and that point D is not on that line. So there's only one plane that you can draw or imagine that contains all, all both of those objects. That's theorem 4-2. Okay, so um, you, I would say, you, if you wanna write these down, you can write them down. A little bit later, you could probably even copy and paste them if you're keeping digital notes. If two lines intersect, then there's exactly one plane that contains them. See that? That's theorem 4-3. And that's all part of this postulate, really, because we talked about that in the postulate as well. So postulate 6, theorem 4-2 and 4-3 give conditions for determining a plane. Okay. Um, identifying points and lines in a plane. Again, these are just more examples that you can see here. Name four points. Well, all you have to do is pick all the capital letters, except this fancy italic. That one is usually associated with the plane, so that's plane M. So you can say plane M and plane N for two planes. And then the two lines here, see that there's only two lines that we see, C, D, and A, B. Okay. So you kind of have to think and look geometric, like three-dimensionally on a two-dimensional paper and a two-dimensional screen. Okay, all right, uh, more of this. Okay, there's a couple more of these guys, postulate eight. You can write this down on your own time if you want. If two points lie on a plane, then the line containing them also lies in the plane. That's kind of a duh thing. Like you can call that whiteboard a plane. Well, if I put two points on that whiteboard, then the line, if I connect the two points, it's still gonna be on that whiteboard, okay? So that's kind of a duh thing too. Number, uh, postulate nine, a line contains at least two points. A plane contains at least three non-collinear points. There's an infinite number of non-collinear points on a plane, just like there's an infinite number of points on a line, okay? All right, that's it, eight and nine. So that's basically the day. If you want to copy these down into your notes, please refer to the text online. But that's it for lesson four. Black math! Give me some math and I'll give you some flack. Black math!